Hello beautiful humans. I hope you're having a positive day. Today we're going to be talking about Arizona. So I have lived here for 14 years. I moved from Michigan. So big change. Uh, basically I've lived in Maricopa City, Tempe, Gilbert. So I know the Maricopa County area and I visited Tucson. I visited Flagstaff, Sedona, um, the Grand Canyon. So there's a lot to do and a lot of pros and cons. So I just wanted to make a video about all of the, the fun and interesting things that you can actually find in Arizona. So that way, if you are planning to visit or move here, you know all about the state. So let's get on into it. on Arizona's nature. So as you would probably already guess, there's definitely um, a lot of cacti and a lot of browns and beiges, a lot of rocks. So greenery is not what we're known for. We are in the desert. It does get pretty warm here. So flowers are not thriving a lot here. So we do try to have trees and bushes, but you won't see a lot of blooms. But the ones that do bloom, they're going to be kind of messy. So things like your back porch for me, um, my balcony gets pretty messy. Falling of leaves on palm trees, we do have quite a bit of those. But a great thing also about the nature here is that we have really pretty sunsets, um, sunrises as well, and definitely mountain views. So you're not going to see water, we don't have oceans or anything but we do have really pretty mountains, especially with the sunset all in all, you can find really great pictures of Arizona. On your way to California, if you're driving over there, you will actually see sand dunes. So that's pretty cool. They are very clean and smooth. So the smoothness is really interesting. It makes me want to get out and touch the sand, but you know, it's really hot. So there is really pretty photography using the sand dunes. So those can be really beautiful to use as the scenery of Arizona. That's over by Yuma. So now we're gonna get into the weather of Arizona. So as you also may know, being in the desert, it gets really hot here. So I think the hottest we've gotten is about 120, 125 maybe, but that's very rarely. In the summertime, hot midsummer, it's going to be roughly 115 or so all the time. During the winters, you're going to get 46 degrees. That's going to be like December and January. Summertime, of course, July, August. We are known as the Valley of the Sun, so we get a lot of sunshine here. It is really beautiful on a cool day. When it's in that November stage, before it's too chilly, of course, we don't get snow. So for us, chilly is still going to be in that 46 range but it's, it does get chilly enough for a jacket here usually. And I come from Michigan, so I love the cold. I definitely enjoy the winters here. Some of the cool things that you can see are dirt devils. So they're like little mini tornadoes made out of dirt, but they aren't, they aren't known to cause any damage to my knowledge. They're just a little bit of wind, so obviously you can drive right through them. It's just something that is cool to go through and obviously hold the steering wheel tight. On that note, we also have monsoon season. So monsoons are going to be a lot of rain. It's going to be a lot of wind and you can get thunderstorms and all the lightning. It's really pretty at times, but just make sure that you have your outdoor furniture secured or you bring it inside during monsoon season, June to September. So it is a long time, but we don't get rain often. So we really need that to liven up anything we do have. But the monsoons are really nice when you're indoors. When you're driving, it can be quite hard to see what you're doing. So a lot of people are driving slow. Sometimes if it's mixed with all the dust and everything, you can be on the highway going roughly 30 miles an hour because it gets so bad you can't see in front of you. But it's very rare. Like I said, it's only through those months. So if you need to pull over, some people do that as well and they wait out the storm. 
it's not a big deal at least for me i came from michigan with a lot of heavy rain and thunderstorms so it's not scary to me but all of that wind definitely makes a mess with all of the flowers so um, getting your car clean you're gonna want to wait till that season is over usually or if there's a nice break in between the weather storms right now we are currently in the monsoon season so it started i would say july we've gotten four or five nights now as of this time of recording of thunderstorms now we're getting into traffic so with arizona traffic we are known to be like the ninth worst uh irresponsible drivers i've heard but it's I mean, we're by California, so I'm not really seeing much comparison to other states. I've been in Dallas also that has some pretty heavy traffic. So it's not going to be anything like Atlanta, Georgia from my research. That's pretty bad traffic. So it's not like that, but do, people do tend to change lanes pretty quickly. That could be pretty universal, but just pay attention to the road. also love to speed, especially on the big intersections like the 10 or the 347. People will be going pretty quickly. We do have a lot of cops out here. Certain cities will be stricter cops, but just make sure that you're being safe. The big thing is we don't have any tolls, so that's good to know. We don't have any ways that you need to stop and watch what you're doing. As far as I know, there's nothing that's going to interrupt your driving besides, of course, crossing borders. <laughs> So a big one to talk about is location. So talking about Arizona's location, the Maricopa County is going to be your Tempe, Queen Creek, Santan Valley, Gilbert, Phoenix, Scottsdale. It's all going to be in your Maricopa County, which is really big. It is a great location to be at. They all have their own little quirks for being in the city. Chandler is kind of my personal favorite. It's really fun with restaurants and I feel like a more mature area. It's got malls and some nice apartments, but there's Gilbert that's going to be really nice. It's going to be very clean, very pretty. Lots of families over in that city. Scottsdale is going to be very party-esque, a lot of shopping, nicer, richer homes, and very clean and pretty luxe. In Tempe, you're going to have a lot of the partying, a lot of the college kids. We do have Arizona State University in that city, as well as the Mill Avenue drinking bar capital of, of Tempe. That's going to be a whole street of lineup of bars, so it's very fun if you want some nightlife. Another great thing about the Maricopa County location or Arizona in general, you are fairly close to San Diego or Los Angeles. Driving to San Diego is five hours. Driving to Los Angeles is six hours. Grand Canyon is three and a half hours away, so really good overnight trip. Flagstaff is where you're gonna have NAU College, so that's Northern Arizona University. And Sedona is only two hours away, so really good day trip. You can also drive to Las Vegas for about five hours. Even though we don't have any oceans, we do have a lot of lakes. So a lot of the main lakes around Maricopa County is going to be about an hour drive. There are roughly four of them. So plenty of things to do for if you have a whole day off or a day trip, you can spend the time at the lake, get a boat. You do have Tempe Town Lake in Tempe, which is just a nice large canal almost where you can get a pedal boat and just spend the afternoon in the sun. If you are heading over to Mexico, you have uh, the border right next to Yuma, which is about a three hour drive. Then of course you have some big national monuments like the Grand Canyon, Antelope Canyon, which is about four and a half hour drive by Utah's border. So the location is just really good. There's a lot of things to do. They are roughly all a couple of hours away for the big trips, so they're good for maybe a weekend vacation. But in your cities in Arizona, they all have things to do as well. Those big cities in the Maricopa County, as well as Tucson's very big. So in speaking of location, there's also uh, the things to do in Arizona. Some of my personal favorite things to do is go to the aquarium. That's Odyssey Aquarium over in Scottsdale, as well as in that same area right next to it is the Phoenix Zoo. So that's a very big popular zoo. We love hiking out here because we have all of the mountains. Just know that it is arid and of course, make sure that you have all the safety precautions 
We do have rattlesnakes, we have mountain lions, and of course plenty of water. But a big thing that I like to do is go to Flagstaff for a day trip. So that way you can hike a more green area. There's also a lot of pretty trails and museums and things to do out in that area. As well as Sedona is beautiful. Lots of red rocks and rivers. Something that we do quite often in the Arizona area is we go salt river tubing. So that's in Mesa. And Mesa is going to have this big beautiful salt river that you can actually tube down and you start on one end or you can pick which section you want to start at. I like to start at the beginning and do the whole thing. That's going to be a good few hours if not more for your time and just make sure you wear a lot of sunblock. That water is really cold so if you don't like cold water that's not going to be your thing but you can see wildlife like we are very known for seeing wild horses driving the 347 to the Maricopa area or driving to California as well as Salt River tubing. There are some wild horses there. A lot of people will bring tubes and tie them together so that way you can have a cooler and all your party is stuck together so you don't get lost or separated and it just can be quite fun. I do definitely recommend having water shoes though because once you get out at the end it is a about a foot water deep, but it's very sharp rocks and stuff on the bottom. So it can be a little bit hard to get out and just make sure that you're good with keeping yourself sturdy uh, because the current can be quite fast at times. So it's just really fun to do. It's something that I definitely recommend people try if they're into that sort of thing. The Gilbert area does have a big, beautiful temple and I actually watched that be built because I was living in Gilbert at the time of it being built. I do absolutely love the architecture. I am very into interior design, so the architecture is beautiful. It's something that you will definitely see if you're in the Gilbert area, whether from afar or close up. A lot of other cool things that you have in Arizona to see is the Hoover Dam. There's Havasu Falls, which is a Indian reservation. Um, big beautiful waterfall is very gorgeous. You can see pictures of it online and it's just dreamy to me as someone who likes hiking. There's also Goldfield Ghost Mining Town. It's an abandoned mining town that, that of course is known to be haunted because a lot of stuff happened there. It was a long, long time ago that it was actually a town used for mining, but it's a tourist attraction now, which is very cool. They have a lot of little shops and it's just a fun little way to get out and see a little bit more of Arizona's history. We have the Phoenix Art Museum, which is a big known art museum here. It's gorgeous. I've been there many times. We have a science center. We have the Arizona State Fair, which is really popular and fun. We have a lot of festivals like the Ostrich Festival. The Renaissance Festival is a personal favorite. So if you really like that street food, food trucks, any little bits of rides, that's going to be really fun for you. We have the Tonto National Forest. We also are big, avid golfers. It seems like every 10 miles you've got golf courses. They're everywhere, so a lot of people love that. A big, big thing about Arizona is we actually have casinos, and you can go play all of your games there, and we have quite a few because of us having so much reservation land. So really anywhere that you're visiting, I'm sure there's a casino nearby that you can go play and enjoy your time. Really quickly, I wanted to touch on the people of Arizona. So there's a lot of people that are pretty quiet. We kind of tend to stick to our own. We're pretty diverse in the sense of age range. Of course, every city will be a little different with that. But the age range as well as ethnicities were pretty diverse. So moving on to the history of Arizona. So we started off being a paleo Native American civilization. There's a lot of influences when you go to museums, you'll see a lot of the clay pieces that have been actually recovered and things that they would use back then. Another big thing, if you are Native American or you like the culture, is powwows. We do have a few of them out here. If you haven't had it, Indian fry bread is delicious. Powwows are just really fun. There's a lot of little shops that you can look for some jade jewelry if you like that or any of the handmade crafts. Like I said, the Paleo settled in first. Their civilization actually just up and disappeared one day. So very interesting stuff to learn about. Then it became a Spanish-Mexican territory 
so we do have a lot of Mexican influences. We are definitely known for having a lot of Mexican food, and I'll get into that in a second too, but you'll see a lot of the Hispanic influences in the area. But after the Mexican War, the U.S. did take over most of the state that we now know. So Arizona became its own territory in 1863 and became a state in 1912, so right around that Titanic era if you're a Titanic fan. A quick touch on the food of Arizona. Like I said, a lot of Mexican influences, a lot of Mexican food. It is delicious. It is my favorite. I eat it all the time. I make a lot at home, just not, you know, not authentically, but um, I have a lot of friends that make it authentically and I love it when they make stuff. Okay, so last thing is going to be cost of living. So big thing for people that want to live here or move here. So the cost of living, of course, we have uh, income taxes here actually. We do have state income taxes. So I know some states don't have that. One of your big expenses to make sure to look out for is going to be your air conditioning because it gets so hot. For me, I keep it at 74. I'm in a one bedroom apartment and I pay about 150 in the summer and 50 in the winter. Apartment cost for my experience, I've lived in two apartments in the area, one in Tempe that I'm at right now, as well as one in Gilbert. And each one, one bedroom, I paid about 1200. So this one's a better location, so it does have no other amenities or extras. It's not something that you're paying for those extras for, it's just the location is good and a nice place. In Gilbert, the one I had was a one bedroom, one den, which we used as a second bedroom. That one does definitely give you a little bit more, plus it had a pool and a gym, it was really nice. So you got a little bit more out there, but your average is gonna be a good 1400 probably for a one bedroom. So it is quite pricey in comparison to other states, depending on where you're moving from. So just keep that in mind of what you want and what's most important to you for your money. As far as houses, I've done research before just loving houses. You're gonna see a lot of houses starting at about 250,000. That's basically the, the minimal that I've seen for a good place. And then of course it goes up to 400,000 I would say for like a lower mid-class kind of area. And then if you want like a higher mid-class, that's going to be like 400 to 800,000, if not in the million. So we don't have in this area a lot of like mansions or big, really expensive houses. But Gilbert and Scottsdale, as well as Tucson has some. And when you go up more to the north area, it's going to be more costly. So that will be kind of those more expensive ones. But it won't be like California where you see big beautiful houses all the time, but sometimes you can get one on a mountain that's really nice. It really depends on what you're looking for for a home, but definitely that middle area, about 300,000 or so, you're gonna get a nice single family home. All right guys, so that is all I have for Arizona. If you're looking to visit or move here, it is a great place, a lot of pros and cons, so just pick and choose what you decide to be a pro and con, and I hope this video helped you learn a lot more about Arizona. Stay positive.